Okay, so I had two pieces chip out and they went all the way down to the brass tube. You can see a little bit of the brass tube down in there. If I rotate it, you can see it there. There we go. And I already glued the one piece back in. And then I had to spend quite a bit of time looking for the second piece, which flew across my shop. The first piece like hit me and then fell straight down, so it was right at my feet almost. The second piece missed me and went across my shop, and I just found it. Had to grab a, a headlamp here and get down on my hands and knees and go across the shop floor looking for it. So, But I found it. It's right here in my fingers. And I uh, just cleaned up the edge because the aluminum kind of raised up a little bit and uh, so I'm going to I've, I've roughened up the aluminum and I'm going to glue this back inside so I'm just gonna put some glue here and then I will f press this in force it down in and then hit it with a little activator just to seal it in place and we'll let this sit overnight to fully cure and I gotta go through with a little bit of CA glue and fill in some of these chip outs that happen along the blank and make sure that this is fully sealed in there because I do not want it to fly out again because I won't get a second chance if it happens again I'm just gonna have to botch the entire thing and recast a new piece so I'll show you how we do that so I'm just gonna set that down there I'm going to grab my thin CA here and I'll just place a dot of thin CA over the entire surface Squeeze out is a good thing when it comes to regluing these back in. So then we just press that on there, press it all the way in, hit it with our activator. and pray that my finger doesn't stay too stuck there forever. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so it's a little proud because it wasn't a perfect fit to go back in there. They never fit the same, you know, the way that they came out. Um, but it's not going to look terrible. We'll go through and we'll just fill some of these areas in with a little thin CA just to make it the way it was before the chip out happened. Alright, and as I said, I'll come back tomorrow and we will just touch that up. Okay, so I built up some layer of CA glue on there and it sat overnight. So I'm going to get this turned back round. I'm going to use my carbide tool to do that. And this is either going to work or it's going to fail tragically. Either way, you'll see what happens. Okay, so my battery died while I was doing the final finishing. And as you can see, I didn't have any more blowout, tear out, or any of it. Looks fantastic. I'm going to get my final profile done with a 100 grit gouge. There we go, it doesn't take much. You do want to be careful because if you heat up the aluminum too much, it can cause a delamination with the aluminum. Uh, I'm going to be experimenting with some ways of scuffing up the interior of the aluminum here going forward to see if I can find a way to get the Aluma Light to bond to it a little bit better. But for right now, it's doing okay. Um, so we're going to get this put together here in just a little bit once I get done sanding. Alright, move this over to my non-stick bushings. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up this blank. Get all the leftover dust and everything that's built up. And any pores that may be exposed, cleaned out. 
cleans out any of the sanding lines and sanding marks and gets all those gone. That way we can apply our CA finish. And you can tell by doing the denatured alcohol that this is going to be an absolutely gorgeous blank. So I'm going to do a CA finish on this. Get all that wood nice and sealed up and cleaned up. And uh, it's just going to protect that, especially since this is going to be a contractor's sketch pencil. You know, they can be kind of rough on equipment sometimes. The guy that this is for, he's not always rough on his equipment. He's going to take care of this, I know that. But this will just give him a little bit of added insurance that it's going to last him for a very, very long time. And with as unique as this piece is, it's got to have as much protection as it can get because there's absolutely no way to duplicate or replicate this exact same piece. So, let's go ahead and get our CA finish applied on here and uh, we'll get this going. Look at that, that's already just gorgeous. And that's just one layer. Alright, I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to build up probably five or six layers and then I'll flatten down my ends again and then I'll uh, get it thrown back on the lathe and we'll get this smoothed out with our uh, grits of polishing pads again. But I will make you sit through all that. Just know that's what I'm going to be doing. We got this back on our bushing, so let's go ahead and take our heavy grit polishing paper and we will sand this back smooth. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous blank. She used some Mylan's friction polish here. Just put that on. We just buff it off. Look at that. Beautiful. So we hit it with some scratch free. Very nice. Now we're going to put on a few coats of Renaissance wax just to give it a little bit of a protective coating. A few layers of protective wax will just give it that little bit of extra oomph against anything that we may find on our fingers. And I'm just as guilty of this as anybody else. So we just put on a few layers of this and that just gives us a little bit of peace of mind. And we'll just let that sit for a few minutes. Okay, so this is sat on there for a few minutes. It's fully dried off and so we're gonna go ahead and just buff this off of there and then I'll put on a few more layers and I'll shut the camera off because you don't need to sit around and watch that. It's kind of boring, but we get this buffed off here, show you how it's going to look, and then we'll get a few more layers on, and I'll meet you back at assembly. And a couple of pieces were still wet, even though it sat around for 10 minutes. So I'll just buff that by hand. Let's put it on thicker than I thought. There we go. Just a beautiful piece. Alright, see you in assembly. Alright, we got our parts laid out here, ready to go. I've got my instructions here because it's my first time doing one of these. So, our instructions state to line up parts according to diagram, see which they are. Press the mechanism nut into either end of the barrel, this being the mechanism nut. So with these, you always press the tapered end in first. So this is our tapered end. And it's going to go into this end, just like that. Put it on here. And then just press that into place. Make sure it's fully seated and flush, and it is. Press the clip assembly into the opposite end of the barrel. So this is our clip assembly. We take this, slide it in there, and here's where we need to decide how we want our clip to sit. I kind of like it right about 
there. Then when you're writing with your right hand, you'll see that flash of light that goes through those pieces. And on the opposite side, you'll have your hexagon patterning. I don't know, let's see. How do we like that side there? Kind of like that peninsula that kind of sticks out there. That's neat. I don't really want to cover up this section either with the clip. Yeah, I think we'll put that right there. And if the customer wants it to sit a different direction, it's easy enough to tap out and reposition later on too. Rotate that, press it in, make sure that it's seated. I'm gonna take a spacer out there, that way I can get this a little more, get a little more pressure into it. There we go. All right, so that's on there nice. Next step, slide the barrel mechanism nut end first over the mechanism assembly and screw on the tip end. So we slide this through there. And then we spread that on we can get it to engage the threads. There we go, I just felt it engage. And then we just continue rotating that around and around and around. There, that looks good. We got a good fitment right there on that end. Looks real good. And then, we just simply screw that onto this end, thread it onto this end, and that's good to go. That's nice. Nice thick pen. A little dust on there. It's got good balance, good weight to it, which is what he wanted. He wanted something with a little bit more heft because he was buying the little plastic cheapo ones that were like 17 bucks a piece and using, you know, thick lead for, for drafting and drawing. And he wanted something with a little more weight. And I think this will do it for him. It's got a little more weight, a little more heft, sticker, so you won't get as much fatigue drawing with it check our mechanism there and yep that pops right out now to sharpen that tip you just simply take off this cap here on the back and it's got a little sharpener down inside there just press that in twist it a few times and that'll sharpen that right up so we'll let him do that once he gets it we'll press that in there that's good to go get you a close look at that Just a gorgeous pencil. Yeah, it turned out real nice. Alright, thanks so much for joining me out in the shop today. That pencil turned out just beautiful. Uh, this is going off to my buddy who's a contractor. He's a former Navy and he used to be a diver. So the ocean blue is just going to make him all sorts of happy. Um, got some wood hybrid in there. It's got the honeycomb. Just a beautiful pencil and uh, all to his design. And of course he said like an artist's um, you know, words of, of death. Like, oh, I asked him how he wanted the, the hybrid to be and he goes, I trust your decisions as an artist. It's like, oh, you make it so difficult for me because now I know that I have to do just the best work possible. Whereas if he had just told me how he wanted it, I could have said, well, that's how you asked for it. <laughs> but he said, I trust your opinion as an artist, which means that I have to be creative with it. <laughs> so uh, sometimes those things just happen, but I got a little discouraged when I had those couple of chips chunk out and I just, I had to leave the shop go away for a little while, come back in, brought a headlight with me, and right about the time that my wife was going, honey, I think it's time to give up, I found it. It's right there, right in the middle of my floor, which is why you keep your shop's floors clean, because then you can find the pieces that fly away. Um, <laughs> got it glued in and came up with a plan on how I was going to do it and stuff, and uh, it turned out wonderful. You can't even tell um, which pieces had flown out. It absolutely seamless and it looks really really nice so I'll get you one last look at that if you can see it because you know lighting is awful but you'll see it in the photos as I exit the screen here which of course you're waiting for because this ugly mug is just not doing it for you I'm sure <laughs> Uh, 
Thank you so much for joining me out in the shop today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right here in the center of my chest. And then be sure to also check out some of my other videos. I might have something here that you might want to check out. And I'm putting up videos just about every week now. So come on by the shop. Check them out. Thank you so much. This is Suits Crafting. Signing out.